Destructible walls. I've always been interested in how I could maybe create one without using, you know, physics or something of the sort. Uh, physics kind of sucks. I'm going to be honest. Using an Unreal is uh, an absolute nightmare. Now, I've already created glass breaking effects, as you can see here, and they look pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how they're looking. You can shoot the glass, it'll chip off pieces, and then you can break it entirely. But I'm curious, how can we apply that to a wall? I'm talking like drywall, chip in the drywall, stuff like that. So today, I'm going to try to make that uh, with you guys. Not the entire thing. This isn't necessarily a tutorial. Maybe you'll learn a few things along the way, but we're going to try to create a breakable, destructible wall. Now, the glass wall already works pretty well-ish. Um, the collision, as you can tell, there's the red X there. That basically defines a wall with a collision. The, the collision doesn't really work too well. Like, you can kind of shoot through it, but there are moments where it doesn't work. That being said, this is a top-down game, and honestly, we don't need, like, hyper details for everything. As long as we can get the wall kind of breaking, I think I'll be pretty happy. So for now, our destructible glass already has a whole damage system. It reuses our uh, damage interface, uh, and this is basically reused for literally anything that takes damage. And it takes in all this information, it takes in collision UVs, and this is how we basically find where we shoot uh, the wall or the surface. Also, uh, before I continue here, let me show you how this works. We use render targets. That's, that's basically it, right? So we paint the render target, which is essentially using a brush, uh, which is this, uh, we can randomize the rotation of the UV, uh, of the UVs and stuff. So then that way it's a little bit more, you know, fancy, a little more different. Um, and then we use this texture to basically define the parts and then that gets painted straight into here so you can see the red gets used to cut out the opacity and then the green gets used to do some other fancy stuff like changing the opacity a little bit um, we also I think do some refraction and the refraction kind of makes it look a lot cooler so we're gonna have to repurpose this for our wall and then we'll figure out how it goes from there all right, well, I've taken a look at our old walls that we were using for the cathedral, um, and it already had like a predefined wood frame. Went ahead and kind of made a separate piece because we want our walls to be kind of different. Um, so then that way you can know which ones are penetrable and stuff like that, because obviously we want bullets to go through the wall. And that's going to be a pretty big gameplay mechanic um, that you can't really do in all the other levels. So there's going to be full on like bullet penetration through the wall. So. Uh, I made it so, like, this isn't really normal in an actual wood frame. Like, I'm sure some uh, carpenters and, uh, you know, house designers and whatever are going to be like, that's not, that's not structurally sound. But hey, for a video game, we have these, like, wood things sticking out. Uh, and it looks like this in game. Look at this. So I feel like this is a nice little change up. You know, you can actually tell that this is a, like, penetrable wall versus all of the other walls that are, like, you know, just solid. Um, that way, uh, players understand that they can shoot this and shoot through it and stuff. So that's pretty important. All right. So I went ahead and I took the destructible glass blueprint that we had before and I deleted and stripped down everything we didn't need. Uh, for our system here, we had to replace with destructible. This basically means once we've completely destroyed it, we would send information to, uh, the Niagara, uh, effect, the glass shatter effect and do all this stuff but we're not doing that so i deleted all of that i deleted everything i didn't need we didn't need health so i think i ended up deleting health actually wait there's remnants of it there uh, i deleted health it's gone now so here is what that looks like so far i think this works yeah it does so we're shooting through it it, it creates little chips so something i made is i save the hit locations of every bullet that we shoot through here and then uh, if we shoot that spot or a nearby location nearby that, it's going to instead create a larger shatter, uh, which is what I showed off earlier. Uh, I think that might be a different brush. Uh, so I'm going to have to like look through that. So we're swapping out the texture with a, which a, with a larger one. Uh, most likely we'll have to do something similar to this for our uh, like actually breaking down the walls obviously it's not going to look like this this looks like glass breaking uh we're going to swap these out with more like drywall shooting it so we're going to do a little bit of research we're going to look at what it looks like when you 
break down drywall and stuff. And then from there, we'll be able to kind of figure out some textures that we'll have to create uh, for that. But so far, that like, you know, that looks pretty good. I think what could be kind of cool is maybe if you use like a high velocity weapon, uh, like an assault rifle or a shotgun, maybe we could like shoot down the actual frame. But that's, uh, that's more work. All right, so I went ahead and gathered a bunch of references of bullet holes and drywall and uh, whatever this is. This is definitely not a bullet. There's a whole ass bear just clawing through the wall. And I just remembered we are only using one entire texture for the entire thing. Whereas I feel like drywall is relatively like kind of chunky. It stays in one area for the most part. So I'm wondering, we use a pack called Ballistics VFX and their decals use textures that have sub UVs, which allows them to break it up into four sections. And then that way they have more variation. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking maybe we can reuse one of these textures and add sub UVs to our uh, break brush. That way we have more variety. If we have four textures, this should be enough for a top down game, to be honest, uh, with different varieties of intensity and just like maybe different shapes and stuff like that. Um, and then we can have a second brush that is even like a larger piece uh, that hopefully doesn't look like a Canadian maple leaf. I think we want to turn our texture into a sub UV. I might even be able to reuse one of the textures that we use here. I think it's decals paper. Yeah. So this texture uh, also has normals, which is fantastic. We might be able to reuse this and slap this in. All right, well, <clears throat> I think uh, we've got a bit of a start here. I feel like I might have broken a couple things though, so this doesn't look right, if I'm gonna be honest with you. Now that we've changed the brush, let's see if it actually like works properly at all. Yeah, that doesn't, that, that doesn't look right. All right, so I got my canvas here, uh, pre-painted with some midnight black, and we're gonna go on ahead and paint some nice Happy little bullet holes um, should be fun. Yeah, honestly, we could probably just go with that and not do anything else. All right, here we go. We started with the red mask. Now, if you are curious about how to make an RGB mask in the best way in Photoshop, we're gonna double click on the blending options. And we're gonna set this channel to only red. Um, that way, if you were to, for example, have a green channel and you wanted to separate these, it would properly paint on top. So you can see now, when we go into Unreal, this is gonna have just green, and then we'll have red. So, now we're gonna do the green, which is gonna be the outside drywall, which is still going to be painted, it's not gonna be masked. The only part that's gonna be masked is the red. That's how we have our material set up. And then we're gonna, yeah, make drywall. All right, so here's what I got. Pretty simple, uh, we'll stick with this for now, and that should be like a good starting point. We'll have to make the second intensity as well after that. I also wanna try to figure out how we can make it so the backside is brown. I might use some vertex painting or something like that um, to get that going, because um, I want everything to be one material so we can all cut it all out consistently. Because what I ended up doing for this wall is it is UV'd on the side, it, it's projected. Um, and because, you know, that's to make it so if we shoot one side, like right here, for example, is going to result the exact same way on the other side. Um, and because of that, we can't really have two different textures or two different materials on both sides. So I think I'm gonna use vertex colors to make it so the inside is brown and the outside stays uh, the original color, which is white. All right, here is what we got so far. Uh, we have this. Uh, I did notice that our drywall color is for some reason this kind of gray beige-ish color. Uh, I might have f***ed up somewhere. All right, well, we got something. Uh, I would say that these holes are looking a little, um, I don't want to say comical, but they're looking comical. We might, we might want to adjust that a little bit. Take a look at that. So uh, I want to say that I feel like we could maybe do a little better. Now we just need to fix the other glass break brush and really get that going. And potentially it would be cool to somehow incorporate normals into this as well. Um, but our current material setup doesn't allow for that. All right, I went ahead and added and made a intensity two wall break. Let's take a look. I haven't tested it out yet. So let's see. So we got the normal holes and then we add in the big chunky pieces. 
which uh, might have too many big chunky pieces. So that doesn't look too bad. I don't expect players to absolutely just shoot the shit out of this, but let's test it out with a shotgun real quick. See how that looks. Uh, not too bad. To be honest, I'm kind of expecting a little bit more. Let's try it with an assault rifle. No, not you, an assault rifle. Yeah, basically as expected. Um, it'd be cool to maybe make it so different caliber weapons produce larger holes and stuff, but I don't know if that's like a necessary detail. I could definitely tell there are some little visual artifacts in here though. I, that looks like bump offset. Uh, I think I'm noticing an issue based on how I set up this. Uh, the bump offset is going to edit even the green no matter where it is. So I think I actually have to have these separated. I'm just gonna fix this real quick and hopefully we should have something better looking that actually has depth. So let's fix this up. We'll get the backside having brown color for the vertex painting and then I think that should be a pretty good first part in terms of getting this destructible wall system going. All right, this looks 10 times better than what we had earlier. We don't have that crazy artifacting that we had before. Um, and the bump offset, you can kind of tell, is actually working much better now. And we're actually getting a little bit of like depth. Um, if we mix that in with normal maps, we're gonna have a really nice result on our hands. And there we go. We have the opposite side with a different color and it actually really helps uh, make this pop out. I think what we're gonna do is the other side is gonna have a different kind of normal map. Um, so it's almost as if like it's smoother. All right, and now this is what it looks like. And it was very simple. It was just taking our vertex color that we had before with our lerp and flattening it. So flat normal map color for those that don't know is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and one, I believe. All right, so there's one last thing that I wanna do, um, which is, at least for now, is getting it so the bullet does not get destroyed when it hits the wall. And that's gonna be the next step. And I think we're gonna probably do all that, that, that'll be it, I think, for this part. I think we're gonna split this up into two parts. We're gonna have like more detailed destruction stuff on the, on the wall and whatnot for the second part. And the first part is kind of like getting this going and getting it to work and whatnot. All right, so luckily I already had a system in place uh, for shooting through glass and it was called not hitting glass. I added penetrable and now I made it so our actor has a tag called penetrable and you can shoot through it, which is pretty cool. I don't know if we shoot the wood, if it'll penetrate. Yeah, it, it'll penetrate through. I think for the purposes of just making it not annoying because I feel like people are gonna get really pissed off if they shoot the wood and it doesn't work. Um, we're just gonna keep this as is. And so in part two, we are going to do some more fancy work, making this look a lot cooler. But getting the gist of it, um, this mechanic works. We can start putting it in our levels and it'll work. It'll be a penetrable wall where we can hit enemies behind it. And hopefully we can figure out making it so enemies can see through this after you've shot it a few times. Uh, that could be kind of cool because um, making the enemies be headless chicken, even though you're literally looking at them through a hole, uh, a hole this big would be kind of stupid. So hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of a direction. Of course, I want to note this was never a tutorial to begin with. This was kind of like my process behind how I kind of wanted to create something and kind of more like a devlog, I guess. But, uh, you know, we have something pretty cool going. In the next video, we're going to go through uh, some other things like breaking down the entire uh, like wall, uh, all that kind of stuff I think would be really cool. Using C4 to be able to break it open and whatnot I think would be really awesome. So that's a little thing I wouldn't mind messing around with. Uh, but for now, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And of course, until next time.